after um, uh, my letter, which I acknowledge that I wrote, uh, appeared uh, in a newspaper today, in the Hindu Today, I would, uh, I thought it's my duty to clarify my position, and uh, that is why I requested all of you to come here. Um, it's an extremely painful moment for me because uh, my family has been associated with the uh, Indian National Congress uh, since the inception. I am a fourth generation Congress worker. My great grandfather uh, was a member of the Constituent Assembly. All the members of my family, obviously not I, have been imprisoned in the freedom movement. My grandfather was the last Congress chief minister. In fact, uh, uh, in 1967, after uh, the late revered Kamaraj, uh, Mr. Bhaktavatsalam was the Congress chief minister. So I come from a family which has Congress blood flowing in our veins. We have deep association, and it is a way of life. So. From my youth, uh, from Youth Congress days, uh, Congress blood runs in my veins. And uh, therefore, uh, for me, it's an extreme, extremely anguished moment that it has come to uh, this position when I have to rethink my association with uh, the Congress uh, party. Um, I. Uh, uh, I, I, I've actually, I'm, I'm in such an emotional uh, moment that uh, I've jotted down the main uh, points that I want to raise before you. And uh, I feel that uh, the time has come now for me to rethink my association because uh, of uh, what happened in the recent past, that uh, the Congress is no longer the Congress which I joined with uh, such great hopes and ideals. And uh, I had a 30 year long association with the Congress. I want to, I want to uh, remind you that uh, with, grat with gratitude, with extreme gratitude to the, con to my, the party, the, my Congress, which has given me an opportunity in the Rajya Sabha, not even Lok Sabha, in the Rajya Sabha to serve uh, this country. And I would like to remind you, all of you are from my own state. I have served without blemish, without a single blemish, from 1986, both when the party was in power and outside power. And I have been spokesperson of my party for 10 long years, without a single blemish being there in my career. And I'm extremely grateful to my party and my leadership for whatever opportunities were given to me to serve the nation and to serve the party. And I continue to maintain that I serve the nation and the party with tremendous dedication to the best of my ab ability. But today, the party and the values which I joined, it is no longer the same party that I believed in and that I joined. And the reasons are this. I have written in this letter which I have written to the party president, Madam Sonia Gandhi, that I was a member of parliament, and I was made minister of environment. And when I was made minister of environment, the party line was very clear that the policy of Srimati Indira Gandhi, that the policy of Sri Rajiv Gandhi to preserve the environment it must be protected at all costs. And therefore, it was my duty to make sure that every single step I took, no matter how popular or unpopular, should be strictly according to law, according to rules, and preserve the environment at all costs, despite any interest to the contrary. This was the party line. This was explained to me by my leadership. And as I continued my duties as minister, uh, I uh, received several instructions uh, from the office of uh, Vice President Sri Rahul Gandhi, uh, forwarding requests 
forwarding representations from NGOs who complained about environmental deterioration due to some large projects. And I was asked by his office and by him to make sure that environment is protected at all costs and to ensure that these large projects don't cause tremendous havoc to the environment. And according to these instructions, which I perceive to be directions and the party line, and I myself <coughs> believe that the environment should be protected at all costs, I did my duty, I did due diligence, I had these projects investigated, and some of them I stopped. And they were great uh, uh, investment projects. Uh, many of my colleagues in the cabinet protested strongly. Uh, uh, there were very heated discussions in cabinet. Very often, uh, I had to face the anger and wrath of all uh, my colleagues in the ministry and in the cabinet uh, who, who felt that uh, economic progress uh, was being blocked. But I had to keep on telling them that environment projects uh, have to make sure that the environment and the future is not destroyed at all costs. And I therefore had, uh, followed fully the party line uh, <coughs> with the support of the party and under instructions uh, from uh, my leader. Madam Gandhi was also interested in forest rights. She wrote to me several times, making sure forest rights should be protected. Several projects, especially roads, had to be studied in the view of uh, rights of forest dwellers. <coughs> Sri Rahul Gandhi was interested in the rights of tribals being protected. All these reasons made me stop several big projects, particularly Vedanta, the Niyangiri project, which Sri Rahul Gandhi himself uh, said that to the tribals that he will be their sipahi. Uh, it was later upheld in the Supreme Court also. I followed my due diligence. Uh, the Nirma project, where uh, the cement plant was being sought to be built on a water body, again upheld by the Supreme Court. And uh, there were many projects, uh, 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 the Adani project, uh, where uh, I received a specific uh, input from NGOs who had represented to Sri Rahul Gandhi. And uh, especially uh, with the Adani project, uh, there was specific uh, input which was given to me uh, uh, from his office, forwarding representations from NGOs. And all that forms a part of the letter which I have written to Madam Sonia Gandhi. And my views and my decisions were taken accordingly. <coughs> Suddenly on 20th December, so my first point is that uh, I served the country and I was a good environment minister following the instructions of my high command, the party line, despite the fact that several of my cabinet colleagues were against the views I had taken. <coughs> The second issue is on, uh, on around the 17th of uh, November, uh, when I was on tour, I received a phone call from then pre um, pre uh, chairman of the media cell, Sri Ajay Makan, asking me to uh, immediately come back to Delhi. When I asked him why, he said that uh, I was asked to uh, launch an attack on Sri Narendra Modi, who was then the prime ministerial candidate of the BJP, on Snoop Gate. So I said that I was a minister, and after I had become minister, I had been stopped from doing press briefings, and it should not be taken as a view of government, and I should not, and I think the spokesperson should do it. But um, Shri uh, Ajay Makan said that this was a view taken at the highest level. I also said I'm not happy because I think we should attack him on policy and not uh, on, on issues such as this. But again, he repeated it was a view taken at the highest level, and therefore, I was asked to return to Delhi. And against my own wishes, following the party high command, I attacked Sri Modi. And on television, subsequently, I was deputed only for this purpose to attack Sri Modi on Snoop Gate. Uh, following that, uh, this was on 17 November. Following that, on 20th December, when we, uh, many of my decisions were being heatedly discussed and argued. They were being overruled by the group of ministers. I was in complete uh, opposition with many of my colleagues in cabinet due to the party line. 
and uh, around the 20th of December, the Prime Minister called me and he told me that uh, uh, he wants to see me. When I went to meet him, he looked very upset. Prime Minister looked very tense, very grim. He got up and he said uh, that uh, you have been, uh, Madam has said, Mrs. Gandhi has said that you are required for party work. So I said, sir, uh, what do you want me to do? And he said, uh, well, uh, she wants you to resign. So I said, yes, sir, I'll do that. And within half an hour, I gave my resignation. I immediately asked for an appointment with Congress president. But I was told she'd speak to me on the phone. I spoke to her on the phone, and she said, yes, you are required for party work. Please follow Prime Minister's instructions. Next day in the media, it appeared, the same thing appeared. But I heard from friends in the Delhi media that Sri Rahul Gandhi's office was phoning up people and saying that this is not for party work at all. But uh, she's just, uh, they, they didn't give a reason. And after that, there was a continuous campaign of speculation, vilification, of defamation, wrong allegations against me, allegations of wrongdoing, nothing which has ever been brought to my notice. At the time I resigned, I have the letter here. I distributed it once again. I distributed it on that day also. Honorable Prime Minister wrote a letter praising me for the contribution as council, as a member of the Council of Ministers. No wrongdoing was pointed out by anybody. Thereafter, I met the Honorable Congress President in January. I told her I'm being vilified and defamed in the media, and I would like to respond. She told me not to go to the media. She said that I will be given party work. I came back to Chennai, and uh, within 15 or 20 days, I received another phone call from Sri Ajay Makan that uh, you, I'm sorry, tomorrow the new list of spokespersons are coming and you are being removed from the panel. Which was again a shock to me because several times Madam Congress President as well as Honorable Prime Minister have praised me for my contribution as spokesperson. So I have no idea why I was removed as spokesperson. After that, when the Anthony Committee called upon leaders to find out why we lost in the Lok Sabha elections on several other occasions, I was not, neither consulted, nor called, nor sidelined. My issues are all with the National High Command in Delhi. I want to put on record, I have no issues with the state party at all. Everybody in the state party have always cooperated with me. So I was totally sidelined by the National High Command. And several times I asked for an appointment to meet Congress President. I went to Delhi. I was never given an appointment. I wrote a passionate uh, email to Sri Rahul Gandhi uh, to say that uh, because the main points that I want to make in one of the main points I want to make in the press conference, 20th of December when I was asked to resign, the next day on 21st of December, Sri Rahul Gandhi addressed a meeting of FIKI leaders where he assured them that environment uh, will no longer be a bottleneck. When I saw this on YouTube, I was alerted by media. I was very upset because the main hard line on environment was given by him. And he himself was, if he had a problem, he could have told me to do the clearances faster. But he himself was going to, asking me to go the day before he addresses Fiki. And the next day, he's telling Fiki that environment clearances will now become much more easy. Whereas there was really no bottleneck. There was really no problem. Two important issues, Kasturi Rangan report, which I notified the day before I was sent home, and uh, one a particular file of Adani group which was missing and found in a bathroom. The next day, I was asked to resign. When I wrote an email to Sri Rahul Gandhi saying, very passionate, saying, I saw your speech in Fiki. I want to know why you did this. You have never said that uh, I was uh, holding up projects. Uh, whatever I did, I did because you asked me to do. I got a reply, and I, even a murderer has his day in court, is what I wrote to Sri Rahul Gandhi, to which he replied, I am a little busy right now, and I will call you soon. But that appointment never materialized. I was unable to meet either him or Madam Gandhi. Then Mr. Vasan split the party. As you know, he <coughs> formed his own party. Day before Mr. Vasan formed his own party, I was called by Motilal Vora to find out and to, to be asked to stay in the party. 
That was the first contact I had from any senior leader in the Congress. After that, I wrote this letter. It is dated, uh, I think, the 9th of November. Actually, I sent it about two weeks later. I can give you the exact, because I, I still kept it. It was a very painful thing for me. About, but definitely by the end of November or first week of December, she, I've got the receipts for it. Uh, she received it. And uh, I did not get a reply. I did not get a phone call. I did not even get an acknowledgement. Then I told a few colleagues in the Congress that I'm now going to the media. I'm going to the media because not I, I, it's not about party work. It's not about serving. It's not about power. Uh, doing party work, I have been a faithful, loyal, dedicated servant of the party, utter loyalist of the Gandhi family. I have no, I have no shame in saying this. I was there when Sri Rajiv Gandhi was assassinated. I was with the body the whole night. But why I was sent home, why for one year everybody was allowed to ruin my reputation, ruin the glorious legacy of my family, this is something that I'm not able to digest or tolerate. And I felt that if I'm not getting an explanation from my party, there's no democracy in my party, then I have to go to the public with my side of the events. I'm not guilty of any, Prime Minister himself has written to me saying that I've done a wonderful job. Nobody has ever accused me of wrongdoing. Just some vested interests within the party by spreading innuendo and falsehoods and lies and putting them in newspapers with vested interests without attributing it to sources. These uh, people, uh, I, I have to place the record straight that so far nobody has ever given me any concrete allegation of any wrongdoing that I've, and I have committed no wrongdoing. If anybody is able to show that I've done anything wrong, I'm willing to be hanged. I'm willing to do and to go to jail. But I want to stand proud, uphold my family's legacy. If I'm not able to work in the Congress party, if I'm not able to uphold the legacy of my family, I place on record my gratitude to the party for having given me this opportunity. But in this suffocating atmosphere, where by lies and falsehood and innuendo and uh, other people, my reputation is vilified and ruined, I cannot function <coughs> in this atmosphere anymore. Therefore, today I announce my resignation from, as a primary member of the Congress, from the Tamil Nadu Congress Committee trustee, which is not morally correct for me to hold once I'm no longer a primary member of the Congress. So I resign from my position as a trustee. I have not yet sent the letter. I'm making the announcement here. And the letter of resignation I will send to the Congress president and to the state president uh, from the Tamil Nadu Congress Committee Trust uh, today, after this press conference. And uh, I, I want to reiterate that I am only wanting to set the record straight to uphold the legacy of my family, to uphold my integrity, and the fact that I only did what I was asked to do by my party. I only did the right thing for the country, and I'm not guilty of any wrongdoing, and I need to set the record straight.